Yes. But I'll tell you a funny story about Neil. I mean, he was he used to look behind things a lot more than I did. And uh, I was his junior once. He took Silk a year ahead of me. And one day I was briefed as his junior, which I thought was pretty interesting because I was a very senior junior at the time. Anyway, so I went over to see Neil to confer about the case. Well, I opened the door and I could barely see Neil because the room was full of smoke and the first thing he said to me was, would you like a beer? So after we'd got the pleasantries over, um, he said to me, right, he said, the first thing we're going to do, Jeff, is amend the defence. I said, well, why are we going to do that? There's nothing wrong with it. He said, yeah, I know that. He said, but the solicitor drew it and we can't have solicitors drawing defences. So, <laughs> so Neil wanted to amend the defence. I heard once that um, if the worst thing you could say perhaps to a solicitor who's put a brief together is to say it looks like a piece of journalism. Yeah, well, maybe. I'm was it sure. on that level that he was describing it? Oh, well, he, he just liked teasing people, including his opponents. Yeah. So... Actually, it, yes. I'll repeat this story about Neil because he's repeated it himself. He was appearing in the Dogs case in the High Court. That's the one about government aid to church schools and he was cross-examining a mother superior I think and at one stage in her evidence she said he was asking her what she'd been doing I think and she said I've been praying and Neil who admitted later that this was one question too many said well what have you been praying for mother superior and he said I've been praying for you Mr McPhee <laughs> so <laughs> brought the house down of course <laughs> So, um, yes, you, you, he was obviously one of your most colourful and interesting opponents. What about other people that you appeared against who really gave you a run for your money, do you think? Oh, there were a lot of them, actually. I mean, Jack Hedigan, Glenn Waldron, Des Whelan. I, I was led by Des Whelan in a case, and I was just on the verge of taking silk. Des liked to do everything himself, and the case went, I think, for five and a half weeks, and Des didn't let me answer, ask a single question of any witness or leader witness or do anything until he had to leave and go to Tasmania when he left me in charge. Um, oh, a lot of good advocates. Um, I might have needed a little more notice than you've given me to answer this question, but the, I mean, the standards at the Victorian Bar, I thought, were terrific. They, they were... There were a lot of competent, good advocates around. A, a guy that I appeared a lot against, who'd never took silk, was a fellow called Fred Tinney. Fred was terrific. He, he was always doing plaintiff's work and I was doing a lot of defendant's work. He was a good advocate, very passionate. I can remember once in a case <clears throat> being conducted right at the end of the year and he was acting for an old age pensioner who'd managed to walk against a light into the side of a turning vehicle. It was a hopeless case. And um, Fred started his address to the jury by saying, well, the fact that the plaintiff is a pensioner and it's 10 days till Christmas is irrelevant to any of the issues in this case. <laughs> and <clears throat> the jury agreed with him. They found for the defendant. <laughs>